A warm greeting, today is Tuesday, August 29, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, we will be discussing the updated forecast for what is now Hurricane Adalia, which crossed over Pinar del Rio last night and is currently heading towards the state of Florida. Additionally, I wanted to mention that the powerful Hurricane Franklin maintains sustained maximum winds of 150 miles per hour. This hurricane was on the verge of strengthening into a Category 5 hurricane, but we estimate that it is currently at its peak intensity. The last time we had two simultaneous hurricanes in the month of August was in 2010, with Hurricanes Daniel and Earl. Furthermore, the formation of Hurricane Adalia on August 29 is earlier than the normal third hurricane of the hurricane season, typically forming by September 7. Therefore, this hurricane season has been more active than usual. The forecast indicates that Hurricane Franklin will continue its northeast trajectory over the next few days, passing northwest of Bermuda. While Bermuda will be spared the worst effects of this powerful hurricane, it is still expected to experience dangerous tropical storm conditions and significant storm surges throughout the island. Regarding Hurricane Adalia, it is forecasted to rapidly strengthen into a major hurricane. It should reach Category 3 status before reaching the Florida Big Bend region, whereas Hurricane Franklin is expected to maintain major hurricane status at least until next Thursday. If Hurricane Adalia strengthens into a Category 3 hurricane, it would mark the third time since 1851 that we have had two major hurricanes in the month of August. This has only occurred previously in 1886 and 1893. Let's now focus on the region where Hurricane Adalia is located. The hurricane currently has sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. During the past night, it crossed through western areas of Pinar del Rio, bringing heavy rainfall and strong winds to western Cuba. As it moves over the Gulf of Mexico, we've observed a more rapid strengthening process due to improving atmospheric conditions. The Doppler radar in Cuba shows a much more defined circulation center after crossing Pinar del Rio. We can also see the development of an eye wall, which could signify the beginning of this rapid strengthening process. Before crossing Pinar del Rio, what was tropical storm Adalia had been disorganized in the Caribbean waters. However, the friction caused by Cuba's terrain has helped the system become better organized. There is a strong consensus among specialized trajectory models. Over the next 24 hours, the hurricane will continue moving directly north, then make a turn to the north-northeast, entering the Florida Big Bend region. Specifically, it is projected to make landfall just south of Tallahassee on Wednesday morning. Along this path, the hurricane will be moving over increasingly warm ocean surface temperatures, a primary reason for its anticipated rapid strengthening into a Category 3 hurricane. Most of the specialized intensity models predict this rapid strengthening over the next 24 hours, estimating maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour upon arrival. Here is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. There have been slight changes, shifting the trajectory slightly to the left, which increases the risk to the northern regions of Florida, including cities like Tallahassee, Gainesville, and Jacksonville. After arriving in the Florida Big Bend area on Wednesday morning, the hurricane is expected to reach southern Georgia as a Category 1 hurricane by Wednesday afternoon. It will then move northeast, crossing over the southern parts of South Carolina and North Carolina as a tropical storm from Wednesday night until Thursday afternoon. Here are the current advisories and watches in effect. In purple, you can see the hurricane warning extending from Panama City to Tampa. In red, there's the tropical storm warning covering southern Georgia, much of the northeastern Florida peninsula, and up to Fort Myers. Cities under the hurricane warning include Panama City, Tampa, Gainesville, Ocala, and Tallahassee. Under the tropical storm warning, you'll find cities like Jacksonville, Melbourne, Fort Myers, Orlando, Kissimmee, and areas in southern Georgia. We also have a strong consensus among the top global models. Here is the GFS model, predicting that by around 8 a.m. on Wednesday, the hurricane will make landfall as a Category 3 storm just south of Tallahassee and near the city of Jenna. Additionally, the European model's forecast is very similar, slightly to the right. It shows the hurricane entering near Jenna around 9 a.m. on Wednesday as a Category 2 hurricane. The German model also predicts a trajectory between Tallahassee and Jenna, making landfall around 11 a.m. on Wednesday as a Category 2 hurricane. So, there's roughly 24 hours left before the hurricane reaches Florida. It's important for residents of the western, central, and northern parts of Florida, southern Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina to complete their preparations this morning. In terms of other effects, rainfall accumulations of 5 to 8 inches are estimated to affect northern Florida and the central southern region of the peninsula, as well as the eastern and southern parts of North Carolina and South Carolina. Cities like Tallahassee, Gainesville, Savannah, 
and Wilmington are at high risk of flooding. Over the next three days, three to five inches of rain are expected for western parts of the Florida Peninsula. Furthermore, flooding is anticipated due to storm surge. For instance, the Tampa Bay area could experience a surge of four to nine feet. From Tampa to Tallahassee, across the Big Bend region, a surge of eight to 12 feet is expected. Extreme caution is advised, as these floods typically cause damage and pose a risk to life and property. The combined effect of wind and water will likely lead to power outages, particularly in northern Florida and southern Georgia. Widespread outages are anticipated in Gainesville and Jacksonville, with significant outages across areas between Tampa and Orlando. Sporadic outages are expected across eastern North Carolina, the southern central region of South Carolina, and the southeastern region of Georgia. Some localized outages are also expected in the central and southern parts of Florida. Please take this into account as you complete your preparations for Hurricane Adalia. Well, that wraps up the forecast update. Currently, a Hurricane Hunter aircraft is about to enter the center of circulation. I will remain vigilant and provide further updates this afternoon or evening. I hope that our followers in Pinar del Rio, Cuba, are safe, and I urge followers in the state of Florida to complete their preparations promptly. Until next time.